uh, we are just in time to start the workshop. So I think uh, you could start the transmission right now. Okay. So uh, welcome to the workshop Debian in the Modern Pipeline. Uh, for this workshop, uh, we did a special setup in uh, LAN because some technical uh, restrictions we got when we were doing the, the workshop. So we decided to do it in, in, in a LAN to be sure everything will work or the most of the workshop will work. Uh, so uh, for the people that will really do the workshop and not just follow me in the screen, uh, you got a small ticket and that ticket you will have an uh, IP and URL using an IP address and you will have a user and password okay so for the whole workshop we will use that user and password so keep it with you and when we ask for use that one in the documentation please use that one do not use another one do not create a new account because if you do that, then it will not work. And we will lose all the time we did doing the setup. Uh, so uh, please uh, uh, go there. Uh, use, follow the instruction in the, in, the, in the small ticket. Please, uh, I think it would be a good idea to turn off the Wi-Fi to do not have a network conflict. By the way, if it's working, it will not be mandatory. Okay? So during the time people will start basically coming to here but using, uh, but using the, the LAN, I want to say to the people that is just uh, listening by internet, <coughs> this is not a real domain, it's in just in Orland, so if you go there, you will get nothing. Uh, after the workshop, we will see if we could get a way to do like the whole repository public in, in another way. For now, we have just uh, the LAN set up. Uh, and Basically, uh, the idea is that the people uh, doing the workshop are supposed to come into this uh, website and please click in here, check in, before to do any other uh, step. Okay, so do not do an account, just click in check in. <laughs> and we are here. So basically, there is a setup we require for this uh, workshop. Uh, please, uh, th that you will read as a ticket in red is the small uh, paper ticket you got with the username and password. So. If you are you're supposed to be here, everyone in, in, uh, that is in the workshop are in this page right yes. now? Okay, so please follow the instructions. If you have any question, just uh, ask me or ask uh, Jorge. Uh, we will be happy to help you, okay? Uh, during the time people will uh, do that, I will explain. Uh, basically, we have a local Git lab installation and people will do a small setup to get access into that GitLab and also people will do a basic setup like uh, doing a runner installation and cloning some repositories and installing some software doing uh, adding the SSH key into the GitLab uh, that's like in, in the general way that they will do, okay? So uh, I will explain uh, first who we are. So basically uh, the workshop uh, is uh, 
something uh, we did with uh, Jorge, Jorge Ernesto Guevara Cuenca, and me. Uh, my name is Freddy Pulido. Okay, so we bought a volunteer at uh, Fundación Carisma. Uh, if you want more information about uh, the URL is uh, charisma.org.co uh, using key. And uh, we are volunteering as sysadmin for that or, uh, organization that is uh, EFF-like organization in my country. We are from Colombia, but this uh, this one is is as small as that uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation. Okay, so uh, we both also we work as sysadmin DevOps uh, uh, outside Charisma. Uh, we started using Debian in 2002. We bought our members of uh, Hackbot, that is the hacker space in Bogota. And we are friends, uh, but I live in Montreal and Jorge live in Colombia, in Bogota. We want to uh, say thanks to, for some people and organizations. The first I want to say Julian is there. Last moment come here and help us. So that's awesome because we were like having a lot of problems and he just come uh, to help us in the last moment. So thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, uh, we want to say thank you to Charisma because uh, they give us the go to move their infrastructure into DevOps. Uh, I will give more details in the next uh, slide. But basically, when you have an idea, you want to try a new technology, uh, it's not certainly nice if you have used your laptop and you doesn't have a real problem to solve, and you will not have like something, a real product at the end. Uh, so. Charisma was a, 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 a great place and we got like, uh, we wanted to change who was working there because we was having lots of problems when we started uh, there as sysadmins. Hagbo, uh, I write that in Spanish because we say in that way in, in, the, in the hacker space is uh, el espacio donde ocurre la magia will be like the place where magic happens. Why Hackbo? Because uh, the most we know about uh, DevOps and all these new technologies is because we take some time uh, in my holidays or Jorge holidays to uh, stay in the hacker space and start doing some workshops and learning. Uh, so basically the most we know we learn uh, uh, in that space. Uh, uh, the DevConf, we want to say thank you because we choose our workshop and that push us to uh, to finish the project we started uh, in Charisma or okay to move forward the project because it's not already done and because uh, we are so happy to share that we learn because uh, we know that open source uh, free software is about sharing, so we are so happy to share the knowledge we got in all that time and with this experience. And personally, I want to say thank you to Software for Linux because it's the company I work for and they give me the permission to attend the, the event. Uh, so basically, sometimes it's hard you have a nice event, but your company don't give you the permission to go. So I want to thank you, my company, because they give me the time also to do the to, to prepare the the workshop. And finally, this is an overview of the technologies we are using in this project. I want to say uh, Docker was there and is not there because for the workshop. Uh, we didn't finish it, the, the Docker pipeline. We did the pipeline before, but to do it in the workshop uh, was required to integrate that with the new work we did and adapt all the, the work we did before to do it in the workshop. So 
wow, I want to say sorry for that. Uh, but I will explain you uh, in the general way. We have um, De Debian in the center of the equation because we love De Debian. Um, so uh, we try to use Debian as most as we can. We are using, uh, uh, I think the next one will be Proxmox. Uh, is the um, machine we, we, we will use to have uh, all the VMs. And we are using uh, different technologies like KVM, that, will, that is the, the technology that Proxmos use for virtual machines. And we are using also uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox uh, for do test in, the, uh, in our laptops, okay? Uh, we are using uh, Packer, that is the tool that help us to build Images. I will give you more details after. So basically, we will do uh, Debian images for KVM and for VirtualBox, or like one shot using Packer. And we are using Ansible for provisioning uh, config files management. And uh, for automated test, we are using uh, server spec and to like. Uh, put everything in, in just one place to do a pipeline and to have a repository. We are using GitLab, but we are using GitLab with CI. Okay? For people that doesn't know GitLab CI, GitLab do the same as Jenkins do, but have everything inside uh, GitLab. So, is easier to get in and starting. If you want to try that, you can do that from the uh, gitlab.com uh, website, okay? Uh, so everyone finished the, work the workstation setup? Okay. No? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it's seemed to you, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I had to do it now, I <laughs> so we will just wait a moment until now people that is there have any question, uh, uh, any particular expectation for the conference. Would be, I think, could be nice to know. Uh, could people you tell me who are sysadmin? Developer. Okay. No, it's just right to know. Uh, yeah, just follow the instructions one by one. So, for the people doing the workshop, just continue following the instructions. I will talk about some situations in the Charisma Foundation, but follow the instruction. The idea is that people that is uh, listening and uh, watching us from internet, and people that is there will have something uh, during the time you are doing the setup, okay? So I think uh, many people will ask, uh, but I think the first question we're supposed to answer is what and why. No. So uh, basically, uh, the idea is, uh, as I, I, I told you before, we work for a small, we, we volunteer with a small uh, or organization in our country that is a kind of electronic frontier foundation. Uh, our idea is to take the control over the whole cycle for web apps. In that case, is campaigns that these people is doing, like for example, related with privacy uh, in our organization. Uh, so that we are, we want to do is to have infrastructure as a code, uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. 
because uh, we want self-documented and automated infrastructure and we want to have the apps source code uh, under our control. So I will explain the first part is uh, the problem we want to solve is uh, the infrastructure we, ha we actually have have a poor documentation uh, and we got like everything working from the previous sysadmin but we have no idea what they do before uh, and every time we have a problem or a new project we have to go to go and read all the config files and try to realize what is happening by example when I started in, in as a sysadmin we got a problem with the email and take me some time to realize that was not just one server, that was a proximal server with many virtual machines inside. And one of the, the virtual machines was the Simbra uh, doing the, the mail uh, uh, as a mail server. And we have also like a reverse proxy and another machine in there. But basically, uh, we have no documentation about uh, this setup. We have just like a general network map. Uh, the other problem we want to solve is uh, we got problems uh, with uh, people at, uh, doing the web de development for uh, Charisma. Uh, basically, that was happening was they were paying some people to do some websites for campaigns and. The, they were using, in most cases, WordPress. Um, the provider uh, give to the uh, organization the final, like WordPress uh, ready to go. We got problems during the process because uh, compatibility, compatibility and because uh, was not possible to reproduce that uh, the developer did uh, was basically a chaos. Uh, so we changed that uh, starting uh, from now. We will have apps doing uh, not using WordPress but using frameworks, and the output will be a website that will be uh, deployed in an automated way in the infrastructure. Okay, and uh, build trusted trusted infrastructure. Uh, I'm sorry, infrastructure, uh, English is my third language. Uh, I'm sorry if it's not clear enough. Okay. Uh, most people will ask why we decide to build our own Debian images when you can get your own Debian, not your own, a Debian image other people did uh, f from the internet. Basically, it's about trust. Uh, because we need to be current with our values and with that we advocate for. So if we are advocating for privacy and we say to the government that, that they are doing or the way they are doing is not good, we have to be capable to do it right inside because if we do not do that, we uh, will not be current. And because also we could be target uh, from attacks because it's an organization that advocates for uh, freedom, um, privacy. Uh, so it's very important to, to have infrastructure you, you can trust. Uh, Basically, there is in the internet a well-known uh, slogan about that, that is, there is no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. So I know there is a lot of discussion about if you're supposed to use and trust the cloud, but in our case, uh, because the kind of, organiza of organization we are, we decide to do not trust the cloud, to have our dedicated server, and to build our own Debian images and to integrate everything using uh, a pipeline and, and that is that people in the workshop will, will do. And uh, many people maybe will ask why we are using just one dedicated server. Basically, it's because it's the only dedicated server we have in, the, in Charisma. 
So it's, uh, it's, that's why we don't have any staging different for, for another server for staging. And now this is the overview. Uh, in, to show to the other people what the people doing the workshop will do, okay? There is a technology, the, the name is Packer. Okay. Uh, basically, that Packer uh, do is virtual machine images and deploys in uh, cloud providers. The idea is that you could centralize uh, your base images in just one place and in that way, you could, from that place, start doing your base images and deploying your uh, VM in the place you prefer. It could be if you have, if you use Amazon, Amazon. If you use Google, Google. And but in our case, is Proxmox in a dedicated server. Basically, the input packer, uh, packer takes is a Debian JSON template. For Packer, uh, the preseed config file from Debian. Uh, everyone here know preseed? Here, uh, preseed. You know who? There, there is someone here that does not know preseed. Okay. Preseed is like the system that Debian have to automate installations. So basically, if you want to do a setup that will start and install Debian, and you want to put in there all the parameters you usually put uh, in the Debian installer, uh, Preseed is the technology in Debian that uh, helps you to do that. So basically, it's a config file when you will write the answer for the questions uh, Debian installer do when you are doing the installation. In that way, uh, the installation will, will be automated and will not require human intervention. Okay? Uh, so, and the, the other item for the input is a Debian ISO image, and you will have to provide the checksum to be sure you are using the, the, the right uh, uh, one. And in, in our case, in the output will be, uh, we call that B chaos, that is base charisma operative system is, is a box for background, and we, we will get also in the output a uh, packer, uh, no, Kuko uh, KVM virtual machine. Basically, you're supposed to be capable to do all the virtual machines in parallel using packer, but in our case, it's not possible because we are using just our laptop. And uh, you, the virtualization technolo technology is, re is uh, linked with the processor. So if you are using one technology for virtualization, the other one will not be capable to work. So that's why we are not using parallel uh, building in Packer. So we are doing that uh, in a serial way. So it will take uh, some time before to get an image working. Uh, a, a functional image, okay? We uh, choose Ansible for provisioning. So basically that we will have in the, in the input for Ansible uh, will be, uh, and it, it depends. If we will use the, in the local context for development, we will use the uh, background box, but uh, and this is like the right was uh, the Kuko KVM image because it's the one we will use in Proxmox. So basically, depending what you are doing, if you are doing some tests, uh, provisioning tests, you're supposed to use that, uh, to do that directly in your laptop using background technology. So you have uh, one uh, box image that is the same that you will uh, have 
in the Kukau technology in production, so you will run Ansible there, and after when that work, uh, you will be capable to move that into production. To be honest, in our case, uh, to finish that, we are working directly in the uh, production that is not really production because this is just a workshop, okay? And the other uh, input for Ansible is the playbook. And that will give us uh, Ansible as output is a virtual machine uh, provisioned in Proxmox using Proxmox API. Okay? We are using uh, server spec for automated test. Most people doing DevOps uh, today is not doing automated test, uh, but it's something uh, especially Jorge, uh, Jorge uh, is working a lot uh, because we think it's, it's certainly important to have an automated test before to deploy something. So uh, the technology we are using for that is server spec, and in the input, we will have a unit test file. And in the output, we will have the test report. If we do that in the right way, you're supposed to start uh, doing uh, the unit test file because from the beginning, you're supposed to know what you will have at the end. So basically, uh, if you want to do that in the right way, you will start taking the requirements, writing your unit test file, after you will uh, do your work, and when you build, you, this test file will verify if everything you wanted, you wanted to have at the end is there or is not. And finally, we are, we are using GitLab CI, uh, with his runner for our pipelines. Uh, that we have in the input uh, could be a push or could be a merge in the uh, Git repository. And if you do that and you previously uh, register a runner, could be in your own local machine or in the server if you want to push that to production. Uh, that will trigger the pipeline. And the pip pipeline basic basically is uh, the way you will like take a every uh, uh, like step we mentioned before and you will like uh, put all together to get that deployed in, in the place you want to deploy that. We will build and will deploy. So basically, uh, at the end that you will have is you push and you go into the GitLab interface and you will look in there the build and at the end, uh, if, the, if you do that in the right way, if the automated test is good, uh, the build will be deployed in the a staging or production environment, depending how you are using that. And if the uh, automated test fail, then you will uh, do not have a deploy. But you have to do that uh, in an explicit way. It means if you do not write like the small, the small uh, GML or script that will uh, give to uh, GitLab the instruction to, to go or don't go to the deployment, he will not realize that by himself because he will not know which technology you are using for tests in, a, in an automated way, okay? So uh, uh, we will verify who is, who is going the, the workshop for people that is really doing that in, in, in here. So everyone finish the check-in and uh, I don't know if we, you, we have a, a way to take uh, like question by Twitter or something like that? By IRC. By IRC? 
you are you are actually in the IRC. Yes. So if if someone is uh, looking this uh, workshop and have any question, could ask in the the uh, DevConf channel. And we have a specific room? Yeah, with the name of the room. Boo? Yeah. OK, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much. So we have a specific room in the ERC, so it's, it's Boo. That is the same name for the place we are right now. So B O. The channel for the channel. Yeah. Is DevConf seventeen <laughs> dash boo? Okay. If you are just right now locking the screen in the search uh, box for Firefox, I just write the channel. Mm, yes, one or two? One. I think it's one, yeah. <laughs> uh. I will just uh, take a tour to verify how it's going in, in the table. Yes, wait, wait there. So basically, you are ready. Good. Okay. I, I didn't know where to stop. That's the question. So, if, if, yes, Jorge, le puedes ayudar a él para que uh, cambie. Todos están ahí. Sí. Para cambiar el el YML. Sí. Alguien falta o. No, no, pues... Ah, 
So basically, at this point in the workshop, uh, most people uh, did the whole setup, and uh, they are ready to start uh, doing the uh, the build. Okay. So uh, at at this point, uh, okay. uh, just give me a second. Okay, so basically that <coughs> we will do, but for who okay. will take the place? We are all in a, in a new ranch with the name of the user. Mm -hmm. uh, then the, the idea is uh, the CI of GitHub take a, uh, take a information from, the, from this file. GitLab.ci.gml uh, and then uh, that's the instruction will be executed uh, in the CI. I, I will explain that and uh, for you uh, for understanding the overview of the CI and the integration of all the project. Uh, so basically that Jorge is talking about is uh, when I talk about the, the old technologies and the input and the output, uh, as I told before, GitLab is the one that will like integrate uh, everything and do everything step by step. It means the pipeline. So is using this config file that uh, the runner that is uh, agent that will run uh, in the server for production or in your laptop when you are doing test, uh, we'll take this file and we'll, ex and we'll execute uh, everything we have in here. So uh, for our workshop it's very important to change the uh, tag because uh, when you are using GitLab you could have uh, many uh, uh, runners in, in the project. So the idea is that each one will use their own laptop for the build. So to use your own laptop, you suppose you have to change the tag for your uh, user, the, the one you got in the ticket, and the one you used to register the GitLab runner, and the one you used to log in in GitLab. Okay. In that way, when uh, the pipeline will start and will send that to the uh, runner that will run in a laptop, before to do that, uh, GitLab will decide where he will send that. In this case, you will put that tag, and if the only run re registered running with that tag is your laptop, then will run in your laptop. If you use a tag that doesn't match any uh, runner, it means any computer running the runner agent, <coughs> uh, you will have no build because there is no where, no place to do the, the build, no computer. And uh, if you choose another user, then your build, uh, you will do your build in uh, the workstation from the person maybe beside you or you will get not built because uh, there is no one using that tag, no, no computer, okay? 
So we change the digital Freddy. Yeah, digital Freddy is. And the documentation yes. says yeah. something different. It's run out something. Uh, yeah, the idea was to <coughs> use said. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, uh, calling me that. Run out techniques. Yeah, please don't use the set because the idea was to do that easier, yeah, but uh, just change directly the tag. Uh, it's three times you have to change that. So Digital Freddy is the runner I, I'm running in my laptop. So do not use that because it not all will push that in, in my laptop and it will kill. Uh, it looks powerful, your laptop. Yeah, it's it powerful, but if, if, you, <laughs> if you send one, two, three, four, uh, five <laughs> lines, uh, oh, well. It will not kill the computer. It's just you. You it will have become to slow. To, you have to wait to, okay. to, uh, to finish each job to run, to run the next job. Then. Yeah, it's, it's, it, no time to it's, and basically the idea is uh, you will test uh, that it's working in, in your laptop. So yeah. Right. So for for people listening, I will uh, leave her uh, Jorge to explain the the pipeline. Uh, I want to say uh, everything we are doing here is a setup for a workshop. It's not ready for production. So the idea is you <laughs> will the people doing the workshop is, the workshop is learning how to do that. But when you go to production, you have to change a lot of things because security restrictions, and because you have also to do it this fix in the infrastructure you actually have. Because most cases, you will not have the opportunity to start from scratch. Uh, usually, when you are sysadmin, there is something there, and you will go there to uh, modify, to change, to improve everything you have in, in place, OK? So go ahead, uh, Jorge. I will give you the. Well, uh, basically, we have uh, an way to order the, the execution of of the pipe. And we have three stages, build, test, and deploy. Uh, in, in this file, we define jobs. Each job will, will be run in, uh, in parallel for the same stage. Uh, what does this mean? We have three jobs in this part, okay? We have packet, server spec, and deploy artifacts. Packer is the build, the, stage, uh, the build stage, and in this point, we will uh, build the, the, uh, the image. The images uh, are uh, the uh, dot, QCOW2. Then that is there. The name of the job, the stage of the uh, uh, the stage that uh, that will be used for this job, the tax, uh, uh, the instructions. Uh, of course, uh, here can can be a, a script and a cache. Mm. Let's explain cache in a moment. Uh, we we can we can have uh, more more jobs per stage if if we have uh, uh, two jobs or or any number of jobs uh, the jobs will be executed in, in parallel okay but in this case we need uh, we need uh, the jobs uh, in line and in batch then we we have only one job per stage. OK? Uh, this job, uh, as Freddy was saying, uh, will be, will build the image one per one. The first one is uh, the QMO uh, image. Then we use, 
if, if, if you check the readme of, 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 of this repository, uh, <coughs> the same instructions are heard. Well, it's, it's just in, the in, in the readme, uh, we can find only, uh, only a, a one instruction for build, for build uh, the two image, but here we, we can, we will uh, split the, the execution, right? Then uh, this build, of course, will be images, and images will be in the, the background box built by this line that I am showing here. Uh, will will be in the box directory. Then uh, we cache the directory. Cache is is the method for for sharing information from job to job. Then uh, if 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 we don't do cache, then in the next in the next job we can we we can't find that uh, that that image in the next job. We will use that box in the ne in the next job for do a test. Okay. It's clear. The next one, the next one, uh, server spec is for is for is for run the is for run the test. Uh, and it's the same idea. It's just we are server spec is writing Ruby, then we we will use hems, we will use a a bundle. Okay? And the test will be run in the virtual box uh, recently created in it. <coughs> Finally, then we have a deploy artifact job. Uh, this is the third, the third stage, deploy. And what's the state deploy? Uh, this step will only Spec is successful or yeah, that's an uh, important thing. Uh, from job to job, uh, if we are in different stage, uh, the next one will not run if the uh, if the previous job will not finish well. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that is the idea. If if you if the in, in this example in general, if the test is not passed, then you can deploy the, the build. Okay, I uh, understand. If build is not successful, it will not test the board. Uh, the, it's the fact is, the build is successful, but if not uh, uh, run the test well, mm -hmm. then you don't deploy. Okay, yeah. Don't just, uh, not just uh, build well, you need to pass the test. Okay, uh, e finally, uh, we got, um, <coughs> this will be fine, fail, because um, We need to create a directory in the Prosmo server for publish the image created with Cuemo and after copy the image. Okay? But we don't have cache here, then this file will be no exist. Okay? Let's do the example to fail. Uh, after that, uh, we create a, a virtual machine template in the in the Proxmos uh, hypervisor, and finally create a virtual machine from uh, that template. Okay, that is the overview. But we can check 
the detail in the files in the repository, okay? Then, let's go for that. The, the first thing is the, uh, the packer build, and uh, then we, we have a JSON, uh, where we de define the, virtual, uh, the images to, to build. Debian JSON. That is not run the build yet. Maybe it's, it's working, yeah? and, and I suppose it's doing something. Do you push the repo? I push my repo, and I think it's something stupid. Okay, well. I did I went too fast? Right now, no. <laughs> no problem. Just, uh, I want to start uh, a little bit we are doing, okay. and then build all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> okay. No problem. Thank you. Well, uh, we have basically uh, uh, three sections here. The first one is builders. The second one is provisioners. And the third one is post processors. Okay? Variables. Oh, okay. Then we have this size. <laughs> okay. Uh, we define uh, variables uh, just for 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 easy treatment of the of the file. Okay. We define the size, a name, a new show URL, and it's a checksum type. We need this uh, this checksum is for for this image, uh, user full name is, is for a user in the in the uh, in the image that will be created, and uh, a password and a description for virtual machine, uh, a, a version. But then we have first uh, the type of builder. Uh, uh, list of parameters that we define in the variables, and finally, and for me the most important part is this boot command. Is how a packer will be run the installer uh, for the installation. Uh, that syntax does that commands are just uh, Debian installer commands. Okay that uh, install auto, VGA, priority, interface, URL, pass, do, pass WD, user full name, all of that are parameters for Debian, for, for Debian installer. Okay, uh, shoot down command, and this last one is VM name, is the uh, is the name uh, that we, the packer will be create the image in, in, in the hard disk. After that, we have a virtual box, then it's, it's the same idea, okay? Then we have QEMU and virtual box. QEMU for the virtual machines is the Proxmo server, 
and VirtualBox for the box to do the, the test. The boot command is the same, but just another, uh, another builder. After that, the, se the second section, provis provisioners. Uh, we got here a script to, to set to set an interface, an net, an ink, network interface card, uh, scripts, uh, interfaces. Just write a, a, it's a network interfaces file. Um, finally, uh, another script for provisioning the Vagrant machine for be capable to, to use that. It's in the same way. Let's, uh, we got scripts. Hey, guys. A lot of comments out. Now, finally, we have a, a post processor, Vagrant, and uh, this built a, 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 the Vagrant box. The idea is uh, we first create an each section used the previous section artifact. If we create here in the virtual box ISO uh, and a virtual machine for virtual box, then uh, this post processor will be used that to create the the, the Vagrant box. Okay. Uh, I think that is the main idea if if you don't have any questions. Okay. We are clear until here? Okay. Well, well, let's continue. Let's continue. Explain that. What part is not open source? I, ca I can, I can, I don't know about that. Okay. I, I, I know it's, I know, I, I all thought is thought open, it's free, it's open. I thought it was something, the core of it is open source, not all of it. I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I don't know. I think there was an enterprise edition and then there are but, some but, but, the, but the enterprise edition is the same community yeah. edition with support. Okay. Is that is the enterprise age. Okay. You're, you're sure? I think there were, there were additional parts of the You are sure? Are you sure? My, my company is thinking about getting the enterprise edition because there are additional things in it. Oh, I, I don't know that. Yeah, like that's why there is the Elliot discussion to use it or not to use it. Do you know which part? No. Yeah. Yeah. But to do the work. But this GitLab CE is like a module that you add to your standard GitLab installation, or is it? No, it's, 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 it's all uh, okay. apart, it's all built in. Uh, the next uh, part. There is. Uh, we have um, for. There is ready for test, but really you need uh, before that. If you don't have this configuration, you need to create the environment for test. Uh, you can do this with server spec, something like server spec init, and it will ask you for 
for some information, like if your environment is Unix, Windows, if you are using Vagrant or just ESH, SSH service for connect to the servers to do the tests. And we can view that in this moment. That is ready now. Okay. Uh, inside the spec directory, we got uh, another directory. The idea is uh, if you have more machines to do test, uh, you you will find uh, the num the the num the the domain name or the IP address for for that machines to do the test inside each directory uh, will be the test for each one of them. Then, Vagrant uh, uh, create a, uh, by default a machine with the name default, then we, we have a default directory for that. And we have the test. Server spec, uh, do you know is error spec in Ruby? No. Well, it's a test suite. Uh, in the same way, we have server spec. A test suite written in Ruby for servers. Uh, machines, you can, you can do the test. And the test, you, you need to use describe, a type of test. This one is for file. Then the type of test, file, which file will you test? And uh, the test. And then uh, the content of, the, of this file should match uh, that string. OK? And the same file uh, we are doing two, te uh, two tests. Uh, we have another test, which uh, the type of type common to execute a petaget update, then uh, we capture a CD out to, to, to match the output. And, uh, uh, but, a moment. Uh, but why we are uh, testing uh, match in dev.debian.org? And why security web? If you the update the date will be returned the mirrors that you are using, and you know uh, when when we set the proceed file, we use uh, uh, these mirrors. Then will be match. Then okay. Uh, e of course the the exit status uh, should be equal to zero. Or the will be okay for the output. In that order of ideas, we will show you the proceed. Okay, the, this is the proceed file. And the first configuration is this one, the locales. Then we need to use a scope course for our country yeah uh, in us then we have another that is default configurations I will show you just that that configures that we we do change the other ones no the other ones are defaults here uh, the template we you can find in the manual for for installation. Uh, don't 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 have this configuration. Then we set this this mirror. Well, really, is a it's not a mirror. It's a. Uh, it's not a CDN. It's before the CDN. CDN. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's the way Debian decides to do easier to give you uh, the. Uh, mirror that is near to your location. Basically, it's the kind of CDN, but it's before the CDN. When you go there, he will redirect you into the CDN, and after you will get uh, the 
the mirror that is closer to you. Okay, then we set a password for the root. Uh, uh, the default user that we create in the uh, JSON file for Packer will be in the uh, pseudo group, uh, the time zone. Uh, we want to use LVM. A multi-partition option. Oh. oh, what more else? Okay, uh, this is not default, but we are using non-free country and, of course, securities. Uh, some package open is. This. OpenSSH server, sudo, NTP, Vim, blah, 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 uh, fill up rate, and that is all. That just <coughs> then, if, if we see the test, where is the test? Uh, test. These tests are tests for that configurations, okay? So this <coughs> locales, uh, mirrors, uh, the user uh, should, should be in the pseudo group, the time zone, package, okay? No, no this is server spec. server spec. The test tree for, for do the test if <coughs> the Yeah, we are testing. We are testing. Okay. okay. Uh, the, 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 well, first, we did we build the VM using as input the preseed config file, and after, before to deploy, we will check that really everything we we ask it to the administrator to do is there. That is important because uh, by doing that, we could be sure, by example, that all the virtual machine we will use will have the local time. Yeah, because um, many times you deploy a, a virtual machine, and by default, they are using not your local time. And when you have an incident and you need to do a record, you will use your local time. You will not use the data center time or the US time. <coughs> And uh, same for the other stuff we are doing there. But by example, in this way, we can be sure that uh, fail to pay will be there by default. Nothing will go with to production without fail to pay. Okay? Uh, uh, and by example, uh, we could be sure that every virtual machine we will build will have LDM, and this is certainly important because as we are using this one as a base, if we have a special requirement, the, the requirement come after. When someone wants to deploy an application, we'll uh, write to us and we'll say how many uh, space we need and where. So basically that we will do after using Ansible, this is not in, in this workshop, is we will create a new virtual uh, hard drive and we will uh, use LVM to give to the uh, virtual machine the, the, the space the, uh, the application running there will need. By example, if we will run Docker in that uh, uh, machine, uh, we will put like the, the most amount of space. Uh, we, we will Sorry. extend the slash bar partition or specific like when Docker no, it's fine. put the persistent yeah. file. Docker is yeah. waiting. For the machine, yeah, okay. yeah it's building. Okay. It's normal at this point. But 16 minutes is, I think, it's a long time for that. But which processor have you? Have many memory? Well, that will depend on that. Ah, oh, it's working now. Well, uh, 
then we are clear with the test, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the, the time the time depends on your machine because the runner is running into your machine then. But we'll take just five minutes left. L less. This is the okay. No, it's, okay. it's running. Okay. If it, most of the time, it is, it's the same result of set of respect if, if you check manually. Okay. Um, but by the way, in, the in the fact, you, you, can do, you can do add more tests to the, your pipeline to, mm -hmm. to go to a production and do that type of, of, of tests. Mm -hmm. uh, but by the way, also, if you have the box, you could just start the box using Vagrant in your uh, laptop and you could run like test by test and check if that really works. Uh, that could be... Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the, the next uh, step in the uh, pipeline is deploying. And in this case, the deploy is uh, uh, create a template from the QMO image and build a virtual machine, okay? That part is written in Ansible, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we will check Ansible. There is a, a, a specific configuration, but uh, you need to have a host file And in the host file, you have the servers that do, uh, will do the configurations that do write, okay? We have uh, just localhost. If you need to run some, uh, something local in your machine, uh, PVE, Ansible host, is, the, is, that, is this host, the our, our hypervisor for the workshop, Docker station V1, is the new virtual machine that will be created. Okay, don't, we have just <laughs> three, and uh, this file is called uh, inventory. In Ansible, we have an inventory, this is our inventory. And you can set uh, other options for that host, and then, you, then we have this directory, host bars, okay? And uh, div per per server, and we have a bars file. Okay, uh, the user that will be used Ansible uh, to connect for the configurations <coughs> and a key file. When you set up your laptop, you copy this this key to to your SSH configuration. Uh, Ansible become true is. Uh, for default, Ansible will be used sudo to scale submission. And that is all. It's the same configuration for local host? No. I'm lying. Uh, Ansible connection, local. Uh, the, uh, that means that Ansible will not use SSH to connect to a local host. No, uh, Ansible knows that it's local and execute commands to the server. That is all our configuration. Then we have uh, now um, roles. Mm. Do you know Ansible? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, basically, we have many options to configure the uh, 
to do the configurations that we want. Um, but we have only roles, uh, very small roles for that sample. Then uh, the first one is this. Okay. And uh, <coughs> is there a model to use an uh, Proxmos API? But we des uh, decide to use the command to use the API. Uh, from the command line, just for didactical exercise. We want to know the, API, the API, then we use the API directly. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, the first task is uh, create a machine and what? Mm -hmm. Create a virtual machine. Create a virtual machine. Okay. Based on cost. And they create the template for that. Uh, based on that virtual machine, we will create a template. Okay. Then, uh, what's that? Uh, the description? And no, a, a I, I think it's important to say that a template is means it's a kind of virtual machine in read only that will not run and you will use to create new machines from there. So basically you will clone that at the end uh, to do a new one and when that one is there is uh, uh, the one that Antigo will, will use so for it to continue. Okay, that is our first one. Create virtual machine. That's this one. Then, uh, create a virtual machine from the template. We need this. Just the one. Uh, the, uh, the template is based on the cool image that we did, that we did create with uh, we built with Packer before. With Packer. That machine only have uh, five gigas from this. Then we need more. Then we can create and uh, we can create another five. another disk to add to the right of LVM. And uh, then resize the virtual machine. Resize is uh, add the new the, the new hard drive with the with more and define the number of cores and amount of memory uh, for the for the new virtual machine passing on the on the template. And finally, yes. we run the virtual machine. And That is all. Uh, the the last the last one we, we are not using uh, that one in, in this moment, but is to create a us users uh, for this user uh, uh, we create a group called robots uh, who is in uh, sudo. Then we create a robot user. That is in robots group to have uh, sudo and that user is that our configuration of Ansible used for do the configurations. So it, it, uh, it's important to say that at this point, Ansible is using a password, the, the, the password we use uh, in the build to connect <coughs> to that uh, virtual machine. So basically, that we are we. We would like to, in the first step is also some uh, security stuff like change uh, password and hardware for SSH. But the first thing we need uh, to use Ansible directly into that machine and not using a password because it's the right one. 
uh, is uh, to have a user that to uh, use uh, sudo, uh, and the one we decide to use for Charisma is, is for everything that is related with automation is is robot. So that's why. So after that, uh, people will use uh, the the SSH key, and now we not use the the password to get into the virtual machine. And finally, we change the password for the user created the packet that we see here in the file. Then we use a hash for changing the password. But it is that this role we are not using this role right now. What I don't understand is that in your this step you create a template each time and then you create a virtual machine from this template each time. But why not print directly? That is not the idea. No? For the workshop, we do that. Okay. But <laughs> we really need to create a template and stop uh, at that point. And if we need a new virtual machine, and process, uh, then we we use that template for create a new virtual machine. Oh, okay. But here it is all in Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using dashboards in these files. Uh, okay. Then uh, this is a, a playbook. Playbook is uh, is composed by two uh, sentences. Is we need hosts and tasks. Uh, we have tasks inside roles. Then we have a play with that. Uh, host is the uh, servers servers that will be used as you to apply that the target. The target. Uh, we use the, uh, the role to create a template with, with some values. Okay. ID for the ID card, memory, a game name, and file name for the. So ba basically, Ansible will connect uh, into the Proxmox uh, uh, machine. And we'll uh, <coughs> create a PM using the values we have in there. Oh, at this point, is, uh, we are creating the template. The template, I'm sorry. Mm, finally, uh, this is supposed to be a Docker post, but we don't have Docker. Uh, and, and something in important to say about the, the point of Docker is when you are doing infrastructure as a cloud and you are doing an also CI, CD for, for, for your organization, you will have a different pipeline for infrastructure and you will have another project with another pipeline to deploy the, the application. So basically we did the first part and <coughs> after uh, is the point when someone comes to you with uh, some requirement, and uh, if required, you will deploy a new virtual machine. If not, you will not, and you will run another pipeline. You will do uh, use for the new application, and that pi pipeline will create uh, uh, containers in the Docker host uh, you put in the in the pipeline. So basically, we are talking here about the pipeline for the infrastructure first step, and after you have to do another project with the application and with the pipeline for the for the application. This creates the information, and not the the Okay. 
things in the in the virtual test. Bo virtual box install, but it's not. Uh, what was interesting <coughs> was the process. Okay. Yes. So uh, we, I have something to say, like uh, things that happened to us. We lost, uh, I think, a day because of a clean packer. Because our original idea was to uh, use the packer uh, provider, uh, Ansible, uh, provider uh, uh, Ansible as a provider for, for packer. Uh, uh, it's a plug uh, in packer that basically is not working. So we, we did like a workaround for that. Uh, we found also a bug in uh, very front because the the box we built have the background file inside, uh, but when you run background app, it's oh. not taking that that file. So we are just uh, uh, taking the file from the repository and moving to the right place. Right place. We found also that the Packer package for Debian is uh, not maintained and is a very, very old version. If someone want to apply to take this package, I, uh, someone already did it but never really did it. So it's a uh, package waiting for help. And uh, who is user? Do I are you are you user yeah, 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 yeah. then, then, then you need to add the uh, GitLab runner user to the uh, KVM group. Okay. That is the keyboard. And we found also, <coughs> we already knew, but still uh, that problem there. Uh, Presid doesn't take the host name. And that's a very, very old, certainly it's an old problem. Uh, I think this time we would take time to check if there is a bug record. Uh, if not, uh, we will do a bug record because uh, we uh, use... The packer version package in Debian is from September 2016, so it's not so old. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I, I run uh, your tutorial with uh, this packet version and it works. So. <laughs> so the problem with VirtualBox is not in the archive. Right? Yeah, it's not in the archive, but we both have, haven't installed it. Yeah. Uh, it's not in this. Yeah, it wasn't in this. It wasn't in the description to install it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. What, what was interesting is the pipeline. Yeah, uh, we, we want to say it's hard uh, because every time you want to uh, do the iteration to verify, uh, especially when you are building images, it takes time. Mm -hmm. So if you fail, you have to build a full Debian again. But the idea is that after you did it, you will have this uh, beautiful template in front smokes. Uh, you will just call that and you will be sure uh, that will work. Uh, it was also interesting like to, it was hard always, uh, like what was first, the yeast or the chicken? Because we were, we were thinking, we will do that in that way. I know because it's in an automated way, that is not uh, right now, so it will be after. So we changed the approach, <laughs> I don't know how many times. <laughs> Uh, so, another question, why don't you use an uh, Ansible package in Debian? Because you said to install Ansible from pip. Uh, I mean, because in Debian we should use Debian packages. Uh, except sure. if you have a very good reason for that. <laughs> it looks bad. <laughs> we, we know that that question is the job. <laughs> uh, because uh, we are not using uh, in this, we are using we are using different machines and different geography systems. Okay. In that moment, we take the decision. Um, uh, I was using Mac uh, mm -hmm. ah, because okay. my work, then my job. Then uh, we can have the same version. For <laughs> okay. <them. laughs> because certainly, uh, it, it, talking about the whole process, in like in the, we, we think the easier way is if you have uh, use KVM technology in the whole process.
tokens mm -hmm. because you are using uh, Miracle Box mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to, to use that also outside Linux. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is you have all the time to build just one virtual machine and you can test that in your laptop and you can move that to production. And if you do not use Proxbox, use K K KVM, uh, I think it will be easier and more, you will be always just working uh, uh, in the same artifact. Mm -hmm. So that you did here will be exactly the same. Here is exactly the same, but you are using another virtualization technology, something it happens. The idea is not, it's why we are using Packer. But I, I certainly would think it would be easier if you, you take uh, KVM and you use Vagrant with KVM. And, uh, well, basically that. So if you, right now is the end of the workshop. If do you want to talk uh, more in a more informal way, we, we, are go, we are going to the, the Warfare Linux uh, cocktail. So we can take some drinks if you have an informal question we can talk about. Thank you very much. We Thank know you. that was hard to follow by the internet. <laughs> we know that was hard to follow even in here because it was it was hard. <laughs> so, but by the way, we are, we are happy uh, to share this knowledge with you. And um, good evening. Thank you. <laughs>